Hi everyone and welcome back to my desk. I was recently tasked to work on some weather station modules and sensors and in this video I'm gonna show you how you can connect one of those sensors, in particular this wind speed sensor to an Arduino so you can read the data and use it in your own projects. What is really interesting about these sensors is the communication protocol that they work on, particularly the RS485 protocol which is a variant on how the data is being communicated to the Mega controller. And this seems to be the standard when it comes to weather station, because one of the benefits of that protocol is that it can be functional and doesn't lose data over long distances. I have read that the sensors can have up to a thousand meters of cabling in between without losing any signal. I haven't actually tested that, but that's at least the claim. And since those sensors can work on voltages that are relatively higher than what the Arduino can handle, then we will also need one of the converters. In particular, we're gonna need this so-called TTL to RS485 module, which sole purpose is to convert the serial coming in from the Arduino Nano, in this case, in the example that I'm using, to the appropriate RS485 signal that the sensor needs. Now, before we jump into details on how this is wired and how it operates with the Arduino code, let me thank today's sponsor, which is Altium Designer and Altium 365. If you're designing electronics, you know how messy the process can get. Scattered feedback, outdated files, supply chain surprises, and endless back and forth between teams. That's where Altium 365 comes in. It's the ultimate cloud platform for hardware development built to keep your project fast, organized, and manufacturing ready. With Altium 365, your entire team stays in sync. Real-time collaboration means no more digging through emails for feedback. Comments and markup live right in your design files. Automated bone management pulls live pricing, availability, and risk alerts so you avoid last-minute part shortages. And with seamless ECAT MCAT integration, mechanical and electrical teams work together without errors or rework. Everything is secure in the cloud with version control so you never lose track of changes. Plus, AI-powered tools help you spot risk early and speed up decisions. Whether you are a solo designer or part of a global team, Altium 365 streamlines the journey from concept to production, cutting delays and costs along the way. Stop wrestling with disconnected tools and start building better electronics faster. Check out Altium 365 from the link in the video description and claim your subscription bonus. To wire up the sensor, you're gonna need four wires and they're clearly marked both on the case and on the cable here on the side. We have red and black wires that are the positive and negative for the power supply and the sensor can take anywhere from 12 to 24 volts uh, DC. And we have two additional wires for the communication. Yellow one is the RS485A wire and the green one is RS485B wire. Both on the sensor and on the module, we have those AB marking and it seems to follow the standard as defined. If you would like to connect the sensor directly to your computer to interact uh, over serial, then you can purchase one of these adapters. This is USB to RS485 where you have a USB plug of some sort on one end and then you have the three wires that you need to connect. In particular, we have the A and B from the wires as well as the ground pin. Well, you need to provide power to the sensor separately if you're using this module. Now to connect it to Arduino, you have four wires that you need to connect between the converter module and the Arduino Nano. In this case, pins on the module are marked as the I, the E, R, E, and R, O, where the I stands for driver input. And this is where we typically connect to the Arduino takes pin, so the sending pin. The RO pin is the receiver output, which receives the data from the Arduino RX pin. So I have them connected here to, so DI is connected to D9 and the RO pin is connected to D8. And I'm configuring them through software serial to be able to communicate with the module. And the other two pin are DE, which stands for driver enable and RE, which stands for receiver enable, and we need to control those 
whether we are reading or writing to the module so we set the write state on the converter now on the other end we have four pins and we have vcc and ground but vcc is connected to v in which is five volt coming in from the arduino nano and ground is connected to ground However, ground here is also shared with the 12 volt coming in from my bench power supply that powers the sensor on the red and black wires of the sensors. And the additional two wires are connected to the A and B pins as we saw previously from the RS485 uh, standard. To read the data on the Arduino, we need to define where DE and RE are connected. And before that, we are including the software serial library because the Arduino Nano has only one serial output and that is connected to the actual USB. So we can't really use those unless we want to give up on the ability to see data in the serial monitor. We need this for this case. So that's why I'm using software serial. And I'm defining that on pin 8 and pin 9, respectively. Now, when it comes to the sensor, we need to be able to send some data to it. So it replies back with the current state that is being on. And that information you can find within the data sheet provided from the sensor manufacturer. Depending on what sensor you're going to use, this will be different. So I won't focus too much on it, on what it means. Additionally, we have two functions that we need to enable the right pins depending if you are sending or receiving data and we have a function to send a request which just writes the sequence of bytes that we have to the serial that we defined for the library we have a function here to check the crc if we got the right data and within the setup function, we first specify the pins as output, the ones that we're gonna use to control whether we're reading or writing. We have some information that we have started the serial and started the Modbus serial. We're using 9,600 for the belt rate because that's one of the limits on the Nano that it can do and still be functional. Within the loop, we're sending the request to get the data, we're waiting for the response and just parsing that to get the right information depending on the bytes. Again, all of this is really dependent on how the sensor is wired. There is actually an Arduino Modbus library that you can use that in theory should remove all of this and give you a nice method. However, in my case, for some reason that's unknown to me, it wasn't working. At least it wasn't working with the Nano. So I went with the direct approach where I'm just reading and writing the bytes directly to the module. And once we get the right bytes here, then we can use them to indicate the raw speed value as well as the wind level. If I open the serial monitor here, we should be connected to the module. So we see that we got the started and the Modbus serial started message. So here you have it. The wind speed is currently zero and wind level is currently zero because the sensor is not spinning. If I push it with my hand. We're gonna start seeing an update to the values. And if I do this faster, then we should be able to see a higher value. As stated in the data sheet, we need to divide this to actually get the meter per second. So 1.4 meters per second. If I try to speed it up, now it should be to up to 4.6 meters per second. And as we go up, the wind level category also changes as per the uh, documentation. Now, what's also interesting about the RS485 protocol is that you can have multiple devices connected to the same two wires, similar to how we interact with I2C. And each of the devices has its own address that you need to query to get the data in. This one right now is connected to address uh, 01 and that is what I'm using within the Arduino ID to ping that address and get the reply back from that address. I'm not gonna go into details in this video on how you can connect multiple 
devices and talk to it, but you can expand this and have multiple sensors where you're gonna read them through on a different address. And with that, I'm gonna end the video right here. I hope that you find it useful. If you did, then make sure to like it down below. Make sure to subscribe so you learn more about Arduinos and how to connect different sensors. Check out this other video that YouTube thinks you should check out. And I will see you all in the next one. Cheers.